After the election results are in, what happens next? Take a look at how three recent presidents handled midterm defeats the morning after. It was a thumping. But nevertheless, the people expect us to work together. They demanded that a more equally divided Congress work more closely together with the president for the interest of all the American people. We will work with them in a bipartisan fashion uh, uh, in an attempt to solve these problems. And joining me now are two women who have worked in the White House through victories and defeats, former advisor to President Obama, Anita Dunn, and Nicole Wallace. She was an advisor to President George W. Bush, also the author of a new book, 18 Acres. And Anita, let me, let me begin with you. You saw Reagan there, you saw Bush there, you saw Clinton there. Who will President Obama sound most like tomorrow? I think President Obama will sound like President Obama. He will stretch out his hand to work with both parties as he did after his inauguration. Listen, the American people are sending a message to Washington and they're sending a message to what they see as a Congress that hasn't, hasn't looked after their interests of middle class families and they're saying, listen to us. And I think both political parties are going to have to listen to this message and that the president will be working with both political parties to move this country forward regardless of the outcome of these elections. So the rhetoric will be, will be what we expect. How about on substance? Do you expect any major substantive policy shifts? George, this was always going to be a time when after the, you know, after the crisis that existed when the president took office and after he averted really a Great Depression and after working to get this country back on the slow road of economic growth that we were going to see faster economic growth and a consolidation of these policies. But let's, let's take a step back and look at this. First of all, you know, the voters get their say today and the voters are going to go and they're going to say, we want people in Washington to listen to us, to put middle class families first, to work together and to get to work on, you know, building this economy again. And the president's done that for two years and he's looking forward to working with the next Congress, and we think it'll be a lot of Democrats. Uh, a lot of Democrats, but Nicole Wallace, many more Republicans uh, tomorrow than there are uh, today. And uh, I, w I wonder what you think they're, the message they're taking from this election and from past Republican experience dealing with Democratic presidents. You look at those presidents right there, every single one of those presidents uh, won uh, re-election, although the 2006 came after President Bush's re-election. Yeah, look, I think President Obama has a great opportunity to do something Wednesday morning that he didn't do after his inauguration, and that's to walk into the Rose Garden and say, I hear you. And it's something he actually could have done and maybe averted what looks like disaster for Democrats tomorrow morning. And, and after Scott Brown won, Ted Kennedy's seat in Massachusetts, say, I hear you. The voters have never been satisfied that Barack Obama has sufficiently focused on growing the economy and adding jobs. And whether on the substance he's, he's done the right things has almost become a relevant in the mind of the voters because voters feel like they there are not a lot of times in American politics where they have a single urgent need from their president and they had a single urgent need from their president of the last two years and they don't feel like he delivered. Uh, isn't that same message being delivered though to the new Republican leaders that are going to be coming in uh, as well? I think they know from talking to them that they have to focus on jobs but they're going to have to make a choice as well. Do they choose to cooperate? with President Obama and stand firm on principle, which is going to guarantee gridlock. Well, look, you, you know better than I do that what's deep in these polls is that, that for a lot of voters, it is sufficient to make them prefer Republicans. Just the idea of someone, something being in Washington to stop Obama's agenda. His agenda is actually unpopular enough that for a lot of Republican candidates in a lot of districts around the country, just stopping Obama's agenda is enough. But of course, they're going to have to get to Washington and not misread their mandate. They're not being sent to Washington to remake it in their own image. The Republicans who win tonight are being sent to Washington to try to rein in what many voters, including those independents who helped deliver Obama's victory just two years ago, are now so worried about the expanding role of the federal government in American life, its size, its cost, and its power, that they want Republicans there as a check and a break on Obama's and, agenda. And uh, you get the last word here. I wonder what you make of that argument that because these independents are so important and because the president needs to get them back, that actually having more Republicans in Washington is a blessing to him because it means that he must reach out to these independent voters especially. George, he's going to reach out to independent voters as he has. But I want to take a little issue with something Nicole said, which is 
you know, the Republicans who win are not coming here with any kind of a mandate. Their political party has a lower approval rating than the Democratic Party, far lower than President Obama's. They're basically coming here because people are frustrated, they're angry, and they want people to work together. For two years, the Republican Party has simply said no, refused to work with the White House. I think that they'll have to undergo an attitude change as well, or in two years we'll be having a very different conversation. And there will be dueling press conferences tomorrow. Anita, mm -hmm. Anita Dunn, Nicole Wallace, thank you both very, very much. Our election coverage begins online at abcnews.com starting at 7 Eastern tonight. And we're going to cover it all with special election night coverage of Vote 2010 starting live tonight at 9.30. Diane Sawyer and I will be anchoring.